that's uh, you know we're talking about sustainability and green manufacturing it's it's kind of uh, i think very relevant in today's uh in today's manufacturing um you know we're looking at sort of some of the uh the carbon zero net targets we've got to achieve in manufacture but uh, all these are quite big subjects and uh, we, we hope to bring them into sort of bite-sized chunks with a new platform which we'll talk about at the end um, but today really is about tackling oil and coolant wastage uh, in the manufacturing um, and facilities so what we're going to have a look at really initially is is the problem uh, and I'm sure you guys have seen this um, with coolant drug out into the swarf bin um, with machining sensors, particularly with conveyors, is most relevant where we see a lot of coolant um, or need to, depending on the uh, the the, uh, the coolants that they're using on the machine or sliding head, and an awful lot is dragged out. And an awful lot of that we see is customers don't actually know how much they're dragging out because it can actually nest up with the swarf. It's not visible, easily visible from the pictures you can see on the right hand side, but sometimes when there's a lot of swarf in there, um, it can nest in the coolants and build up. And obviously at times when you see that coolant in there, it can look a little bit rough where the tramp oil separates. But we're really looking at not taking that coolant once it's built up in the bin, but we really want to see how we can reclaim that good coolant as soon as it hits that bin. So you can see, you know, machining centers, we see various different amounts can be dragged out. You know, in some cases, 10 liters per shift, 20 liters, 30, 40, 50 even we've seen uh, at times. And a lot of times this coolant uh, um, is taken away, poured into bigger skips or into into um, into certain areas, um, then either separated through a drainage system and then reprocessed or taken away with the swarf. Obviously, there's a high cost of that disposal, um, but environmentally, um, it, it's not good at either. As we see, you know, there's a lot of processing trucks and uh, and things that really will uh, hit uh, carbon emissions and that sort. And there's a lot of manpower to, uh, to, to sort all that out as well. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna uh, look at now is um, some solutions that Wogod offered to this, um, is the coolant and the oil saver. We're gonna look at initially the main, our main product um, um, is the coolant saver um, system, as you can see there. Um, so this is really for, as we say, for the soluble coolant, uh, the uh, dilution mix. Um, it can work on e-toil as well, um, but that's depending on, on, on the pumps because typically uh, we would have um, a, another unit for sliding head usage, um, which is the oil saver, which we'll look at as well. Um, so how does it work? We're going to have a video in a moment, so uh, we're going to have uh, too many, uh, too many uh, PowerPoint slides with text. But the nice thing about the system uh, and unique thing about the system is it actually works passively. So the coolant saver actually works, it's powered from the machine pumps. Um, as you can see there, it's connected onto, typically would be the round spindle pump or the bed wash pump, one that's running the majority of the time the, uh, the machine is running. And you can see it works through the nozzle. It has a unique nozzle system inside there and the flow created, we take a small amount of coolant from the pump. It flows through the unit, through a nozzle system and back into the sump. And basically that recirculating action uh, powers the system and then creates a sideways suction, as we know as the Venturi effect. Um, so as soon as the machine's on and the vacuum cup, as you can see there's put in the bin, it will be working. Uh, so it, the coolant will be reclaimed as soon as, it's, uh, as the machine's on. So we've got a video here um, that's going to show the system in action on various different machining sensors. You know, there's not many, the majority of machining sensors we can use the system on. There's no issue as long as we can locate it off the pump. Um, so as you can see there, the coolant system, the, uh, the units there operating um, in action. And as soon as that vacuum cup is in that bin, it will be sucking up that coolant. So as soon as that fresh coolant, as you can see, coming over. Now, obviously, you can see a situation there before we've come in. Um, there's a hell of a lot of coolant in there. Start digging the swarf around, and you can see in there. So you can see the action. See how quick it is on soluble. It, it, you know, we're looking at probably up to a litre a minute. We have a regulator on the system, so we don't have to have it high, um, fully on. Um, we usually set the system about half on that creates enough suction. So very little power is required to operate it. It's probably less than 0.2 bar. So it takes nothing away from these pumps and these machines. So we're using the wasted power on these pumps to actually activate the system. And once it's set, you leave it. 
there's no re there's no need to anybody to really mess about with that um, so it can be left on um, and running um, it doesn't matter if it's sucking up coolant air it will turn it into the venturi and then back out of the outlet pipe and then back in into the machine various different applications on different machining sensors where they're floor mounted pumps uh, as you can see there or whether it's on waste mounted or even head high pumps uh, we we can install this system it's just got a case of locating it on the uh, on the right pump um, the relevant pump I see the vacuum cup there um, this is fully filtered we have our micro mesh filters in there um, so basically can sit in the swirl um, uh, but we do like to uh, put it around a, a vacuum protector as pulling it in and out would be a lot quicker um, most applications we can use it to really sound to fine swirl. I think probably the only areas of concern would probably be if it's grinding dust or, uh, or cast iron where it's a sludge situation would cause a blockage. Uh, so further filtering would be required there. Another nice thing about it, insulation is very straightforward. Um, we recommend the customers actually install the system themselves. Um, and you know, it comes Really, this system doesn't the machine doesn't have to be down in less than 15 minutes. So as, well, as long as we've got all the fittings sealed and ready to go, we can you typically can get into the machine in 15 to 30 minutes on the majority of cases. So it's a very straightforward insulation. Obviously, it comes with a manual, and lately we've got full insulation videos on a couple of machines. Uh, that's just a step-by-step -step guide. So it's really is um, showing it if any you know maintenance teams need to have a look at that, we can offer um, that as well. We obviously offer support, um, but as we say, it really is um, just basic plumbing into pumps. So it's nothing scary, there's no electrical or any issues like that. So we, uh, we find this, uh, it, it can be very straightforward. Um, so we do offer the full videos as well. Um, the coolant saver kit, a standard, as you can see on the right-hand side box, there comes a nice kit formation. We have some standard fittings there, some half-inch and three-quarter straight and T-gal fittings on BSP, which cover a lot of machines. I'm not going to say all, but covers a lot of machines. Um, it comes with three meters of PU hose and a one and a half meters of 12 mil hose. So we've got the PU hose, six mil is for the vacuum cup, uses roughly just as from the, uh, the pump to the, uh, the swarf bin. Um, this can be uh, increased if requires a further PO hose um, and the outlet pipe again 12 mil by meter and a half again This can be made longer if required as well. This is just like our standard kit um, We do have additional fitting kits uh, for machines um, for, the t for instance for the German style machines which have waste mounted pumps and you can see I've got metal pumps uh, pipe work sorry coming from the relevant pump down below um, so we have a little kit, um, which will be a, a light fitting 22 hydraulic swivel T kit that will connect into them uh, just after the hose at the bottom there. Um, you can see it in the, uh, in the picture on the uh, um, connection point there. Then we have a kit that elbow up, brings it up, nice bracket there, then bring another elbow and then brings the actual coolant saver um, on top of the pump and then we can return it back into the sump. That's a standard kit. Again, it's something we can put together off the machine and then you can put it on the machine in probably less than 10 minutes. Um, we offer two different heights depending um, on this, uh, on the, uh, the, the bracket height, um, on this height here. Um, also we have, um, as I said, the vacuum hose, we've had it you know, in further than 10 meters before. I'm sorry about the spelling there. Um, with the six mil uh, PU hose going up high down on central systems. Uh, and so forth. So it is quite flexible in its usage. Um, as I say, we do recommend um, a vacuum protector option. Um, obviously, you can this be done by yourselves, um, but we do offer a standard steel fabrication, um, which is um, in two heights, 660 and 750 for the higher bins. It has adjustable telescopic clamps, so you can just connect it on the side. Um, and scallops at the bottom. So really that just makes it easy for the vacuum cup to be taken in and out the bin when it's full of swarf. Then when the empty bin comes in, you can just put it straight in there. And it just protects really the hosing on that. Uh, we have offered a, a new, we got a new um, uh, kit, which is the permanent kit, which means that we, uh, you, you have a permanent kit that's put into every single swarf bin you have in the facility or the machines that you, you want to put it onto. 
Um, so we can, we can actually give a kit and it will work on various different bins, angles, sides, um, and you actually permanently mount the, uh, the vacuum cup in the bin there. Um, so we offer fabrication kits through that, um, which makes it nice, probably the larger facilities where maybe we have um, a forklift scenario um, and, and in and out bins going every day. And it's just a quick fit fitting at the top of the hose, as you can see there. The vacuum head con uh, construction, stainless steel head with uh, metal filter mesh, has a non-return valve um, on, on the uh, vacuum cup as well. So obviously the machine stopped, there's no chance of coolant or oil running back down into the system. This is a very much low maintenance um, vacuum cup, has a, a mesh filter, 0.3 millimeters. Um, so really it just brings straight up the coolant that's in the machine. Um, and it's just the old blowout once in a while uh, to give it a clean. Okay, so that's basically the, um, the coolant saver. I uh, if there's any questions out there on that before I start on with the oil saver. No, it's fairly straightforward. And are they, just probably jumping ahead, are they colour coded as in the greens for the oil and the blues for the water based? Yes, it is, yeah. I mean, you do use uh, the green PU uh, for the oil saver and blue for the uh, the coolant. Uh, as you can see with the construction of the oil saver in the moment, it, it's, a, it's a kind of, it's a, it's a, it's a different looking, well, it's, it's similar, but it, it's slightly different looking as well. Right. Okay. Yeah, so that's the, basically that's the uh, the oil saver. Slightly different look, so we've got the green piping. Um, and this has been designed specifically for sliding head machines on neat oil. Um, and we say up to neat oil, most uh, sliding heads will work uh, up to an including 20 centistote thickness um, oil. We have worked on higher, but this really is depending on the pump flow, because sliding heads do have a lower pump pressure uh, rating on the standard pumps we, we connect on to. So why, why we have designed the system and say it has a, a slightly, uh, has a different internal nozzle system that works with far less pressure um, to create the sucking. Because there's a lower pressure on these pumps and the sliding heads, this system will work on less than 0.1 bar to activate it. So it's a very low pressure. The suction rate is not as high as the coolant, but it's enough to keep up with the drag out in the swarf bins. Obviously, the thinner the oil, the quicker it will uh, reclaim it. So we're going to see it in action now. Um, and you'll see this in a, a typical um, a machine shop with a sliding head here with a number of different uh, machines from Citizen to Stars. And we can see how the system is teed off. It actually comes with specific fittings for sliding head machines. Um, and it will work in the same fashion. Um, so. You see a typical problem with a lot of neat oil that comes into the bins. Again, we can reclaim a lot of this as soon as it hits into the bin and bring it straight it back into the machine. As you see in operation there. And one question we do get asked uh, quite often on the system is um, typically on sliding head, you'll be machining a lot of brass. Um, so we do have customers obviously spin the swarf afterwards as well still. Um, in most cases, in some cases with still applications, we can reduce the amount of spinning um, in centrifuge systems. Um, but we have actually done one case study recently where the, um, the customer had such a lot of oil still in their bins um, uh, before, when they were spinning, it was actually messing up the centrifuge system and causing a lot of mess and manpower to get it. Because since with the brass, you do need to get it 3% moisture dry. Um, we'll get it pretty close, but we won't get it to 3% without spinning. Um, but we, what we can do is reclaim that oil straight back up into the machine. So the machine's never gonna, um, as say, stop or run out of oil, which we've had from some customers um, have issues with that. Um, it also causes less resources and issues at the, at the spinner um, as well, uh, which can cause an awful lot of mess if there's too much, uh, too much neat oil.
Okay, so basically, yeah, it is, it's similar in operation to the coolant saver in application. Designed for uh, neat soil, in, up to including 22 sensor stokes. We do have an easy clean out mechanism that can be done by hand, so there's no need to re uh, take it all and, and unplumb it. Uh, because of the nature of sliding head in the nozzle system, we do sometimes get fine particles um, in, the, in there, and we just have to, we have an undo mechanism, turn the regulator off, and then undo. We have that all. Um, all uh, shown on a, on a video. Sometimes people don't even know they've got it on there and sometimes um, on some applications maybe once a week or once every couple of weeks they'll just undo it and clean it. it takes again less than a minute to do. The oil saver kit itself comes with fittings, uh, one inch straight T fittings um, which are typically for the sliding head machines. Okay, we've got a, another video now. I see lots of videos. Um, and this shows really a, a varied amount of uh, different types of installations um, that we've got on there and different types of machines. Um, and how quick it is really, as long as we know where to tee on from. It's a slightly different one there with the shear on machine. Again, it's just about locating with the around spindle pump. What we do not do is connect to high pressure pumps for obvious reasons, um, but the coolant saver can be connected on pumps up to 40 bar, 45 bar, but you know, we don't need to, we can come off the normal standard low pressure pumps, the around spindle or bed wash can be as low as three bar, one bar. We even had the coolant saver on, uh, on band saws with the tiny pumps, which have less pressure. Um, so, and it doesn't take any flow away. Um, or, so you can see there, um, it's uh, installed on a Hermley machine. Extended piece for the longer piece of PUs from the pump to the conveyor. Um, Another pop, very popular machine, the DMGs, where we have the kits for, you can see the kits there, um, for the fitting kit. Matsura, these have uh, floor mounted pumps, so we just pick the round spindle, they're always well labeled usually. Um, and again, it's a nice straightforward insulation. The knee tool again is very much um, similar in fact. We only have one pump usually to pick with this. So we don't come off high pressure, maximum pressure pump for the oil saver would be uh, 10 bar. Um, and uh, the, these pumps on the, oil, on the sliding head are usually around about one bar um, and have a wider hose so the pressure is not as high. Um, but you can see again, we have um, just uh, the uh, teeing off is just uh, after the pump. Okay, another thing that we've um, we, we've launched and we're going to have at Mac uh, in March, um, sorry April, I should say, um, and uh, and uh, as I said, I don't think we'll be uh, exhibiting until Mac till January now. But this product has been launched. In, it's a kit that we've done in in partnership uh, with um, with Eclipse Magnets um, with the Micro Mac. Um, we've got the Mag Saver kit here. So this is kind of like a, a nice combination of reclaiming the coolant or neat oil from the machine, but also cleaning it of the metal particulate. Obviously we're talking about working on magnetics uh, materials, but it will clean the coolant as we save it as well. And this is just not the coolant from uh, what we're reclaiming. Obviously this is the coolant that's in the sump, which obviously gets a lot of uh, debris in it. So this is kind of a nice combination. And what's nice about it is it works uh, in line with, um, with, the, with, the, with our units that so can be put on the same branch line, um, which is great for the, for the filter and it won't stop operation once it gets filled either because it gets to a point that needs cleaning, but it will still operate. So there's no chance of it stopping the machine. Um, so we're extending tool coolant life and depending on the application, it can be as much as 10 times. Um, but you know, it's different applications will give you different improvements on that. So we get all the benefits of the coolant saving um, as long as, along with cleaning it as well and easy to install. So we have that, that kit out now, um, uh, ready to go. So say so who's using the coolant saver? Well, we've got many installation sites from many industries. Amazingly, any industry that's got machining centers uh, for all across aerospace, automotive, um, OEMs um, who are using the product a lot now as well. Um, so it's a subcontract. Um, you know, facilities from a few machines to multiple installation sites of 100 plus machines. Um, various case studies we've, uh, we have with uh, different customers. 
and applications from our partners, subcontracts all the way through. And you know, typically with the cost savings things, you know, with, with um, some with a lot of the aerospace applications, the annual coolant disposal cost alone can be can be around the two thousand pound mark per machine. So the return investment is, is fairly quickly. But we've got all the other benefits of the system that can offer um, around the environmental side as well. Um, one thing we do see um, and and um, people use still um, is is taps, um, which is uh, a method that uh, is not great, for obviously, for the fact that somebody's got to remember to do it. It can cause um, health and safety issues if anybody trips it. And we've heard many stories where the uh, the bin's fallen over and you've got uh, a ton of coolants rolling around the machine shop floor. Um, a lot of manpower to handle it. Coolants hanging around, as I say, with our system, we're bringing that fresh coolant straight back into the machine, and typically this coolant could be hanging around a bit, sun slightly, and also the taps don't drain at all. You know, they, they maybe pick it up, some of it, um, but they leave a lot behind. Um, so we have instances here where we, we did a, um, a, um, a an application where we showed it on taps, and then we did look at it on the forklift, and the customer says they actually leave it on forklift for 20 minutes as well with a forklift to drain the coolant out. Um, which again is resource intensive uh, and just shows how much they're losing about how often this gets done as well is another question mark I would say. Um, we've got um, a couple of videos here, not, they're not so great quality but they'll, they'll show the kind of issues there with the coolant coming out and you can see here um, this, uh, uh, the guy here would um, drain these bins every so often and leave it running before he'd take the swarf away there and then he'd put it on the forklift on the uh, right hand side there and leave it draining again. So this would be typically all fresh, good coolant. Um, so it really does, I think, cross the argument of using taps, uh, one would think, by automating it totally. Okay, we do offer um, a cost saving calculator, um, which, is, um, which is available um, online. Um, and we can give you some good figures, so some rough savings. Um, um, some some um, savings per year by using the system. We just need to know the, the coolant uh, usage, concentrate, um, and mixture, and uh, we can get some good figures there uh, for savings. This is available on Excel. Um, we can also, um, we do have larger audit reports we can do on multiple installation sites uh, where we can look at the amount of uh, machines or conveyors, coolant usage lease per month, um, we just need price per litre, coolant concentration, and the disposal information if that's available. And with that information, we can crunch that into the uh, into the spreadsheet there and give some pretty good figures on the annual cost savings once installed and our return of investment figures as well. So we can uh, we can supply that kind of information. And this is a, a site observation site here where we're, um, we've gone around the site, um, they've selected uh, a machine. You can see there's obviously a, a, a lot of drag out there. Now this this uh, application here, uh, the, um, they, they Freddie Hoovered this out daily. Um, it could be 20, 30 liters and they didn't reuse it because it's mixing around with the other coolants. Um, so as a test for this site, we just um, typically what, um, we'd be looking at is getting a unit on a machine. Um, and you can see there, there before is 20 plus liters of vacuum out daily. It was on a Mazak machine sensor. The units popped on in less than 30 minutes um, and the results are instant. You know, you can see that offering out, you can see that um, that amount of coolant was gone in 30 minutes. Now, obviously we'd be usually operating from a dry scenario where the bin would be put in empty. So it'd be constantly collecting that fresh coolant, but it wouldn't be put usually into a bin full of coolant. As I say, we want the fresh stuff coming straight back up there. But you can see there where we've gone from liters to milliliters left in the bin. So, you know, it makes a tremendous difference and it's automatic. You know, there's no real manpower requirements as system and there's no turning on or off as it's actually run um, by the machine. Um, and that's it with the vacuum protector in there. Okay, so we can see the tremendous savings in coolant, fantastic savings in disposal, and the environmental benefits. These are really, uh, I think, big tick marks in the business, um, as long with the manpower reductions, high swarf value, um, housekeeping improved, um, and health and safety as well.
And the big thing that said we talked that uh, talked about earlier on is the focus on sustainability and environment. Um, you know, we we can obviously see uh, that uh, um, that emissions we want to reduce that uh, in the climate uh, and wastage. All these are big areas for for all industry and every everybody personally and and, and business wise for the future. Um, and you know, this is I know it's a small bite sized thing we're doing, but it is all contributing um, with reduction. Um, in wastage. So as I say, we're doing a big focus on the new sustainability platform, uh, which I hope you can join. We'll be building up with some really nice partners um, it, around from um, technical partners in the industry um, to independent speakers. Um, we offer a membership site so you can get generally updated on all this type of information and products and events coming up, which we have to hopefully have some good ones coming up in the next couple of months. Um, and we have some links that we're, uh, we've just put on the chat box there um, that you can see um, to join um, with various downloads. Um, we'll have a sustainability download um, and events coming up. We're also looking at doing sustainability events uh, as well, which is talking, okay, uh, about cooling and oil, but we'll be talking about other areas um, of, uh, in the industry uh, area as well new products and stuff like that. So we're saying being part of the greening of machining, which is, uh, I think, going to be important for all of us. Um, and a part of sustainable man uh, manufacturing, as you can see, affects environment, economy, and society. Obviously, we want to do these things and still have a business to run uh, and make money. So that all these areas have got to be looked at for the circular economy uh, and so forth. So yeah, I think it's quite exciting what we're doing here. And um, hopefully, you can join, uh, join us on that. Uh, just some of the things we've done so far. I mean, we've, we've done some uh, chance. We've got um, over 5,000 of the coolant savers out there working every day. Um, you know, millions of litres of savings since we first started. And this obviously goes up daily, um, which is um, incredible figures when you think about it um, from the product. So yeah, so that's, uh, that kind of wraps it up for the coolant uh, and oil saver um, presentations. And if you got it, guys got any, uh, any questions there? Yeah, hello, here Rob. Oh, hi Rob, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Hey, the, the hose, uh, that is three meters, is that the maximum? No, 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 it can go up to 10 meters, probably more. Yeah, okay. so this can be extended, okay. no problem. Yeah, we, we extend it quite a lot of times actually, and even on central systems. Okay, yeah, I think this uh, could be interested for us. Yeah, I Rob? think it's, uh, it's a good... Uh, Fantastic. Good thing. Think green is very nice. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think for for need oils, this is very good. Okay. Because need oils are costing uh, real money. Mm, mm, and mm. I think for coolant, this also could be something. But you have to take care that if you get back all the coolant, uh, the additives runs down. Yes. So the the yeah the the the, the coolant is uh, is badly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've got it in a lot of applications out there, as I say. I mean, you know, additives and, as you know, with the biocides are, are being restricted anyway now a lot. So we're kind of, you know, we're, we're finding it's, um, you know, we, people are still going to keep on top of the, the life of the coolants anyway, you know, so as, as important as ever now. Um, but, you know, we, we've got a, you know, the coolant saver is our biggest product with over, you know, 5,000 units out there on applications on, on big insulation sites. So, you know, it's working and it's doing its job. Yeah. Right, so, yeah. Mean, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I also talked to my boss and yeah. uh, he was on his way now, so he couldn't uh, uh, join this presentation. Okay. But, uh, I, I talked to him uh, next week. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I think we will contact you because I think uh, this will be a good uh, thing for us. Oh, that's fantastic, Rob. Yeah, please do. Please drop us a line and we can share some information. I'm more than happy uh, if you'd like me to present again in front of your team, that would be fine. Yeah, great stuff. Well, I look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, Is that okay. Uh, also, uh, Jason, from myself, um, I think like Rob, we are um, suppliers of services to the end users. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have a, a vested interest in helping our clients save money. Yeah, probably good to have a chat after this sometime in the yeah, future. Absolutely. I'll have yeah. a partner um, and, you know, see. Um, how we could work for both of us. Um, I mean, I've watched this system quite closely for a number of years, and you know, obviously, it's uh, 
it is simple and sometimes the simple just get the best results yeah absolutely i think um, that's, yeah. yeah absolutely i think that's the key as well and for us as well you know we're getting you know the names um out there in the industry now it's 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 yeah. working we've got a lot of oems now who are taking on the system and putting it you know we, we you know apart from unfortunately this lockdown this year has caused a bit of a stop in it but we we had two or three new oems who are just about to launch it on their machines as well um and, and that was in germany so that's kind of really mm. taken a little bit of a uh, uh, only a, hopefully just a, a short delay but we have people in the uk who put it on as an option on the oem side as well so i think that's good testament to the product um and you know we have customers who come back you know they who are multiple installation sites where customers just come back um, when they get new machines and want it on their machines uh, i would say in the uk we have some of the the, the some of our bigger companies that are using the system are the most progressive companies uh, in the UK. If you've seen the size they've developed, um, and they just put it on the, every single machine that comes in there. So it kind of testaments to the product, um, and um, and you know it lasts. There's no wear parts on the product, so it kind of just sits there and works away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, 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 yeah, look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, drop us a line, Martin. Yeah, that'd be yeah, great. Yeah, we'll um, and uh, uh, and we'll have a chat. You know, that'd be great. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, well, I'll, I'll speak to my business partner and get something organised and then uh, maybe we can chat further and look forward to it. Yeah, brilliant. Great stuff. Yeah. Okay, Martin, okay. that's great. Look forward to hearing you. And look forward to hearing from you, Rob. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, everybody's well. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's great. Thank you very much for attending the, the webinar. I'd say there'll be some links and stuff you can join up with afterwards for new events and, and stuff like that. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and look forward to hearing from you both. That's great. Thanks very much for Cheers your time, Joyce. Yep. Thank you very much, Martin. Okay. Cheers now. Take thank care. you. Yep. Thank yeah. you, Rob. Thank you. Take care now. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye now.